I'm Debbie Godfrey, and this is the Positive Parenting Pep Talks podcast. In season two, I'm answering your questions about parenting. So feel free to go to the link in the description and leave me a voice message, and I may answer your question on this podcast. Thank you so much for listening, and enjoy today's pep talk. Today we're talking about redirecting challenging behavior, and curricula for today was to review the four mistaken goals and then talk about some specific challenging behavior that you might be having and how the goals apply to that. Why don't you tell me how it's going and share anything and then we'll go from there and see what happens. Okay, so um, this is what's going on. I find myself, um, you know, how do I say this? I know what I know from our time together. And then there's stuff that I maybe, you know, and that's why we have this class, that I didn't get the first time around, you know, or I, I, I'm, I could go deeper with. And what I'm realizing is I, um, I don't know if I already know this and I'm just not putting it into action or if it's something I just don't know. I'm not quite sure where to go with it. But here's, it's, it's perfect for today's curricula. So okay. there's two situations, and I could go one by one, but I don't want to forget both of them. Um, so the first is yesterday we had to go somewhere. So maybe a little different than other people because he doesn't like to leave the house. You know, that's, that is the con a, a consideration. But however, I have created a list, a check, check list for him to go down before we leave the house. And, you know, from going to the bathroom, making sure he has the right clothing, warm clothing if necessary, any food he wants to bring with him, any toys he wants to bring with him. And, you know, I even have on there keys and wallet just to <laughs> get him used to that. Oh, yeah. yeah, and I, I drew everything out. And... Um, and so we, he loves it, and he actually wants to create one for the evening, which we got to go through so that he has his own checklist for the night. It's, it's awesome. But he didn't – so yesterday I said, I'm going to take a shower, and then what's going to happen after my shower? So I set it up, and he said, we're going to go. I said, great. After the shower, I said, start your list. No. <laughs> I don't want to, do, you know, I don't want to da, da, da. get your list and start it. So then he's going down his list. He doesn't want to get dressed. He doesn't want to wear underwear. He doesn't want to go to the bathroom. He doesn't want to do this. He, it, everything was resistance. And in my mind, I'm getting more and more angry. Time is, you know, marching on. We have to get out. And I want to get to the place. My goal is that I can be ready independently and he can be ready independently and if he needs my help along the way he can ask for it but you know that we're parallel and we're getting ready and we're getting out so he just was a complete no to everything and I raised my voice and I um, just said now get it done now let's go and so I really I was getting angry and it made me mad that I was angry so that even got me more angry and then ultimately we got out, and once we got out of the house, he was like, okay, Mom, so look, can we pretend? And da-da-da-da-da, you know, everything was fine. Huh. So I didn't know what to do with that. You know, I thought I had set it up. I thought I'd given him empowerment. So I was talking to, he has a, a play therapist, and the play therapist said to me that I'm asking too many questions, like, are your pants on? what's next, like that. He said that basic, he feels, now, this is a great play therapist, okay, and it's been working great with him, and we've made progress. So I value right. what he's, he's saying. Made, that, he's made some really good suggestions, and he's had some really good insights. Exactly, for sure. Yeah. But yeah. what I'm struggling with right now, is, and I've struggled with it before, um, is he thinks that, he goes, just maybe, <laughs> he's like, just maybe, I have a feeling that you might be giving some of your power away when you're asking questions. And maybe there's times where parents are saying, you know, need to say, okay, this is what it is. Because I have said to him, look, there have been times where, I mean, this is, this is yesterday, but it's the same thing going over and over and over again. There are times, and I say there are times where I can give you choice, and there are times where there is no choice and we have to do this. And he doesn't like it when there's no choice. Um, it's become such a part of him that, you know, he'll say to me, Mom, 
do you want to be Batman or do you want to be Robin? And I'll say, hmm, well, who do you want me to be? And he'll say, your choice. So it's part of his vernacular, you know, to give people choice. And that's because we give him choice. And there are definitely times where that should be in place. So I guess what I'm saying with all of that verbiage is, are there times, how to handle the times where there is no choice? How to handle the times where I thought I set it up. It's not like it's a new thing. You know, we've done this five million times. And just to, you know, I don't know if this would ruin the question, but once we were in the play therapy session, he, we did a play therapy role playing. And it turned out the reason why he didn't want to do the list is because he didn't want to leave the house. He didn't want to go. He didn't want to leave the dogs, and he has the anxiety, and the house is a safe place. So we've made a lot of progress with all of that, but at the same time, I need to be able to say, look, we've got to go, or, you know, this is what you need to do at this point, and, we, and I need your cooperation. So anyhow, so that's the first question, and then there's the second one, but anyhow, that's the first. Okay, well, let's address this one first because the, at the first no, what, if, let's say you were going to use the goal chart and how would you have assessed which goal he was in or did you even think of power. that? When yeah, no, I did. It's power. And I just felt like, hey, I've given you the choice here. <laughs> like, you know, okay. he gets to bring toys. He gets to bring his eye touch. Like, Okay, so you were you were not interested in redirecting for power because your assumption is that you have to go to offering him choices and all this stuff that you always do in the negotiating and blah 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 and that just seemed like more work. You already set it yeah. up, and so um, so so what I want to give you is some other options for redirecting power that don't involve the choices because the choice giving, the win-win negotiation, all of that stuff is very kind discipline. It's negotiating. It's what you're using to empower him and that's what's exhausting you. And that's what is causing the play therapist to say you're using too many words because you are using words when you're offering choices and when you're using win-win negotiation. Okay. okay, and those are good tools to redirect power struggles with a kid who's showing that he's willing to be redirected. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, okay, good. So, good. so because he's showing that he's not willing to be redirected, and he wants to go into these negotiating long things when you're on a time frame, you want to use some of the more firm tools for redirecting power struggles. So in this case. One of the ones you can opt for if you remember it. And so, yeah, I mean, part of this is you're re remembering some of the things we've learned. But what happens with this class is, like, you get the tools and you use the ones that are appropriate for the time and you forget the rest. And then you get mm -hmm. to a place in time where you need other tools that we already learned, but you didn't use them then because you didn't need them. <laughs> exactly. So you, like, forget them. Yep. So, so, one of the ones here is the one where you just walk over without saying anything and put your hand on his back and rub him and make eye contact and then you would look towards the list. I don't know where you keep the list. But you wouldn't say anything. And so the idea of using less words or no words is, is I think, the tool that you need to get out of this talking mm -hmm. too much routine. Mm -hmm. And so it's all of those, any of the, the power struggle tools where you're not using words are going to be helpful. And one of the prevention tools that we covered way, way, way back when is using one word. So when you got out of the shower, and all of this is I would have if, or you know, it's like looking back in hindsight, but it's important to do that for next time. Like if we look back at all the other options of what you could have done instead, it's, it's not to say, oh gosh, you, you know, failed miserably. It's to say like next time, let's be prepared with some other tools that are different than what we usually use. Yes. Perfect. And so, yeah. So instead of coming out of the shower and saying, okay, go get your list, which is, okay, go get your list. Six words. <laughs> How could you have said that in one word? List. Good. And you say it in the sing-song voice, list. Oh, yeah? And that's prevention. So that would be okay, before the power struggle starts. So okay. when you're ready to give him a directive, you can try to prevent or head off a power struggle by using one word. OK? 
Okay. Sure. It won't work if the power struggle is already in play. So uh-huh. yep. if you if you had gotten into the shower and before you got in the shower it said something like, okay, when I get out of the shower, I'm going to tell you to go get your list or something like that, that may have already started a power struggle where saying one word won't work. So you want to make sure he that... Would, he seemed really receptive when I said what's going to happen after the shower. He's like, we're going to get dressed. You know, he, he was... That's why I was so surprised, I guess, too. So he... It, so the power struggle had not started then, thank God. Okay. So and so that's even more interesting. So so you had prepped him. And I think that that's... It's all it is, is that it's your... It's the tone, tone and the words you were choosing. They weren't... Um, friendly reminders it was it was a, it was an order it was like go get your list kind of thing which is what disempowered him and uh-huh. and the other piece of where he was already feeling insecure and i don't know if there's any way you could have observed that or sensed sensed that but the fact that it came up in therapy is something good to know for next time so that when you get the hesitation or the resistance It'll pop in your head like, oh, let me check and handle feelings here first and see if that is where he's at with this, you know, going into a power struggle thing. So it, that that's back from a, a different session. That's not the redirecting the four goals, but that was the one where, you know, you could say, oh, you're looking nervous about getting ready or it looks like you're feeling hesitant about wanting to do your list because you know that'll mean it'll be certainly time to leave shortly thereafter. And, you know, it looks like maybe you're feeling concerned about leaving the house. So trying to go through that handling feelings process would be another option if you know, if you see a pattern developing of him going to power struggles when he's feeling concerned because that's an easy place for him to go. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So then he'll say, yeah, I don't want to go. So but then what would you say for the handling of the feeling thing? Then you you would continue on that line, like, oh, gosh, it would be great if we could just stay in the house all day, every day, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I, I use that one a lot. He loves that one. Okay, okay. Gosh, so. couldn't we eat candy all day? Wouldn't that be fun? What would you eat? You know, we we have fun with it. It can okay. move him away. But I just want to – is there – I, I'm just trying to pick your brain I mean, for every you, yeah, single. I mean, I know you, <laughs> yeah, I know you want the my way or the highway thing, but with him, I just don't know that you're going to get that directly. I think you're going to get it through more finesse, and so, and especially uh-huh. with the, um, the the knowing that you do give him a lot of explanations and a lot of chance and a lot of flexibility and a lot of choices. And sometimes they do need less choice. And he still needs you to give it to him with the kind and firm and not with the just because I said so type of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because that's just going to set off resistance in him no matter what. And so for you to take that deep breath when you notice you're going down that path, and and you know, because you're already feeling it in your body, the want to make him do it thing, it's like, I can do this if I want, but honestly, he's going to win. He's louder, stronger, <laughs> you know, it's just, it's just not going to, it's just not going to work for you to kind of slug it out at his level. And sometimes there's, and I think we might have talked, brushed upon this before, there's a, um, There's a thing, it's not in my class, it's from somewhere else, it's called the one-minute scolding, where you say, you know what, I need you to get ready now, because we need to leave, I already set this up, we made this huge list, and I've bent over backwards for you, and you actually scold them, and you can have a pretty stern voice for this, you don't want to be yelling, but you can have a very stern and firm voice, and then the last 15 seconds, so you scold them for 45, 45 seconds, in the last 15 seconds, you soften and you go to all the love about you. You know, I love the way that you're, you have so much fun making these lists with me and that you really enjoy whatever you enjoy. And then you, so you end it, the, the scolding with a bit of love and connection. Yeah. And so yeah. sometimes that's a good one too when you need just a firm, like, we need yeah. to get out of here now. And sorry it's not empowering to you, but it's not. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I def, that's been a good, I, I love that. I really love that, and I, I've used that. I definitely okay. have. 
and it's been yes. it, it has been phenomenal. So that's another. Okay, so walk o- so n- no saying words. Walk over, rub the back, look at the toward the list. Um, single words or you know less words, single single word, and then um, anything else. I'm I'm making a list for myself right now. <laughs> yeah. Have you have you watched my power struggle video recently or ever? Not recently. Because that would be a, that's the one to review when you're hitting power struggles like this is all those different tools for you know to get out of a power struggle, and I'm I'm just thinking I'm thinking of the ones that are on the video like the make it fun you already do that one I'm just I'm, I want more of the um, the um, firm ones. yeah so another firm one that I don't think I do in that video is the one where they're like if they're in resistance like yelling like I want a cookie is the exercise that I do for this. So, you know, he's saying, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. And you tell them one time in, in, in few words, so the six-word sentence would have worked for this, so it's time to go get your list now. And you only say it one time. So as soon as he starts giving you the resistance, you move in close. And it's similar to the other one, you know, where you're rubbing their back, but it's, you just move in close and you just kind of nod your head and you listen to what they're saying, but you don't respond back with any words which are going to fuel that power struggle. And you just let it kind of um, roll out like he's, but I don't want to go. Nah, 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 nah. And as long as you're not providing verbal fuel, eventually he'll run out of words. And at that point you can decide where to go from there. Like, do you want to just non-verbally go get the list and hand it to him? Do you want to take his hand and just walk over to where it is? I don't know, you know, what you would do next, but that would be the way to not keep talking, you know, to, okay. to use action rather than talking. So with the cookie, I want a cookie, I want, you just let him go, you sit there, you're nodding, because he does that too. I want candy now! And then, yeah, see, what happens is when they scream like that, we tend to back up. Like, we try to get away from them, like, oh, my gosh, they're driving me crazy. And so we're avoiding them, getting away from them, or engaging with them. But even when we're engaging, we're distancing. And so the idea is you give them one directive and, you know, take a deep breath and make sure you're saying at one time very clearly, maybe even getting on his level and looking in his eyes and maybe touching mm-hmm. his shoulder and saying, you know, no cookies before dinner. And one time you say it, and then they go, ah, blah, 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 and you just move in close, smile, rub their shoulder, rub their back, whatever, and nod your head. I'm nodding my head. Like, I'm listening to his feelings and understanding, you know, like, in my head I'm saying all the compassionate words, but I'm not saying them out loud. Okay, got it. You're being, you're right. Yep. And and that will almost always, it may not fix it, um, but it will almost always diffuse it. The only other place that it could go is into the goal of revenge. So if you're really on a roll and you're doing that one, if it moves into revenge, it'll look like them kicking out or saying something hurtful or mean rather than right. rebellious or resistance. And at that point, you'll have to switch tactics because then we go out. Not power. Right. Right, and go into the, okay, now the relationship is disturbed. And at that point, I mean, again, every decision point along here is if you're pushing for control, with this one, you're just, he's, you're going to have less and less. <laughs> well, that's I my mean, concern for sure. I know. Or like 15 years old, you know, like, oh, well, this is going to be a mess. And I used to feel that way, and then I felt like I had handled it, or it was handled, and I guess that's also just like but I don't it, know. It was, but he, but he, what happens is the kids grow to the next level that's right. of that's right. whatever. That's right, right, right. That's exactly right. Yeah, and so then the old tools don't work. So now you're gonna mix in some of the other tools and just bring it to that next level. And then now I'll go back again to the whole thing of feeling powerless inside. With getting his power by fighting with you, and every bit of way that you overpower him in that is further aggravating that mistaken belief inside that I'm powerless. And so knowing that, it's like, 
that's another way that you could handle the feelings. It's like, I know it feels like, it, or it looks like it feels like that there, that you have no control over your life, but look at all the ways you've made the decisions on all the things that you can do to get ready to go. And, um, and maybe, that's, maybe that's a way to empower him more. If you made the list the first time, maybe you sit down with him and go, hey, how about if you and I brainstorm your list again and see if there's anything else you need to add to this or anything that else that you want on here and just get him a little more involved in you know, making the list deeper or owning it more or, you know, there's something else he needs on there. And that would help take it to the next level too because that list is only going to last, you know, however long, three months, six months, a year, and then the list needs to change. That's right. Thank you for listening to today's Positive Parenting Pep Talks podcast. If you're into season two and you're listening to all these great questions that the parents have and answers and ideas for what to do in all these different situations with your kids, please help us out. Like, share, subscribe, and especially leave us a positive review. All of that helps the podcast grow, and I really appreciate it. Thanks again for being here, and happy parenting.